Uh, hello, how are you? Edgar Fernandez from Sufficient Limited, located in Grand Fond, Ontario, Canada. So, the topic of today, actually, it's, um, it, uh, I found it in the, um, um, here in the magazine uh, from the uh, Chemical Engineering, the American Institute of Chemical Engineering. On his uh, edition of July 2017, actually, the magazine is a Chemical Engineering Progress. And I found a very interesting article about the, uh, making sense on, of laboratory fire codes. Um, this article was written uh, by uh, uh, Mr. Richard P. Palusi, professional engineer, CSP. Now I think it's uh, Richard P. Palusi, LCC in the United States. And actually here in Canada, um, well, we have the, the uh, provincial fire codes and we have the Canadian fire code. And also we have building codes of each province and the Canadian building code as well. And apparently there is a, a conflict which um, codes I need to, well, we need to follow, especially in the United States. Here in Canada it's very clear, we follow the provincial fire code, if not federal. And if not, and then um, and more in both codes actually they mention NFPA 45. However, in the United States there is a conflict uh, between, uh, not a conflict, but especially in the quantities, a lot of maximum, uh, a low, uh, a low quantities, uh, MIQs of uh, storage of flammable and combustible liquids. So the NPF 45 specifies certain quantities of the flammable and combustible liquids, and the International Building Code that has its own uh, international fire code, they uh, specify different quantities. But here in this magazine that I have in front of me, um, I'm gonna, I did a brief resume, I highlighted some uh, interesting things that uh, Richard wrote down. And one is the, uh, the NFPA 45 says here that uh, it's focused on confining one single laboratory. So the damage of the laboratory is acceptable long as it, does, it doesn't spread actually the, the, beyond the laboratory. The International Fire Code, uh, that is a portion of the, of the International Building Code, is, is to establish the minimum requirements to, consistent with the national recognized good practice for providing a reasonable level of life safety. That's the, one of the differences. And protective protection for the hazards of fire explosions or, or, or uh, uh, or dangerous conditions in the new existing building structures and, and premises. And um, there are one of the different, another difference is uh, defining the enclosing, the enclosed area. So the uh, for the NFPA 45, the enclosed area is the laboratory by itself. So it, the definition says include enclosed that space used for experiments and tests. So it's the same laboratory. However, the, for the International Building Code, the enclosed area is a control of uh, or control area defined as spaces within a building where quantifies uh, where quantities of hazardous materials do not exceed the maximum allowable allowable quantities per control area are stored, dispensed, used, or handled. So, actually, the International Building Code is considered uh, different spaces. In, at the same laboratory, actually, and the NFPA considered the, everything as a whole, uh, if I understood correctly. And actually, that's the explanation here from, from, this, uh, from uh, this article. It says that uh, um, enclosed area may refer to a single laboratory or a group of laboratories that may include other non-laboratory areas, such as offices. But the enclosed area in both codes must be isolated from other areas by a fire resistant rate separation. That is the thing that they concord. And the other difference that I mentioned at the beginning actually is the NFPA 45 quantity limits. It says that the NFPA 45 requires the laboratory owner to determine the fire hazard classification of the laboratory based on the of anticipated quantities of flammable or combustible liquids that will be stored in that lab. So the International Building Code says here, um, and actually, um, the, the, you see the table, uh, the, the quantities are very different, actually. He put some tables here as well. 
and they differ a lot <laughs> absolutely uh, there is a, a big difference actually um, the NFPA per, um, per uh, square feet and per lab they allow more and the international international building code they allow less actually so there is a big difference also he wrote about uh, what are the practical impacts of the differences well actually that was uh, this this section is really good because the uh, this is the international building code limits the number of control areas based on the number of rows of operator for the NPA 45 this limits the size of laboratories with class A and class B fire hazard classification to 10,000 square feet and the code doesn't limit the size of the class U, class D uh, laboratories but the international building code plays no limits on the size of the laboratory that's one of the differences however he effectively limits the height of the laboratory building about uh, to about three floors unless only very small quantities of plumber combustible liquids are required to be stored there NFPA 45 says also reduce the maximum amount of the hazardous materials on the floor above the floors above the first floor and depending on the laboratory uh, the laboratory fire hazard classification another another uh, practical impact of the, these differences is the NF another one the NFPA 45 doesn't restrict the number of the laboratories units or most floors Second, the NFPA limits the quantity of flammable and combustible liquids stored per 100 square feet of the large space. Now, the uh, International Building Code says that those groups H constructions, which removes any limitations for a much higher emission building cost. NFPA 45 does specify sadly the most stringent laboratory fire rating than uh, the International Building Code. So the NPA 45 actually has several other requirements that are important for the laboratory safety. This includes, for example, requirements from the HVAC ventilation system. So one of it is there are some municipalities in the United States that um, they go with the international building code, especially in the big cities, those big university labs, for example, they go with the international building codes. Here in Canada, you go with the Canadian and you go with the provincial, provincial code. Or you go with, uh, with NAPA 45, or you, um, there is combination of international building code as well. But however, the uh, limits of the quantities here in Canada, we need to follow provincial uh, uh, provincial uh, specifications. So the Ontario Fire Code has those numbers really established already on section uh, three flammable and combustible liquids. But if you want to make more strength and more uh, a more um, a safer um, have a better a, a better build of the laboratory, so yeah, it's a good idea to also consult the NFPA 45. But like I said, sometimes uh, in, in in some places they go with the IVC I, I, and the and the IFC, and then they completely ignore the NFPA 45. Now that is not a good practice, also. Like, I said, like this article says, that there are other provisions, other engineering measures that the NFPA 45 is recommending, such as ventilation, for example. Um, also, the International Building Code restricts the maximum allowable quantities in higher floors, in high floor floors. So, they require the largest first floor in most cases which is more expensive than adding the high floors, floors so and also the NFPA also has a long history of successful limit, limiting fires to a single laboratory so that's the um, the, um, the the one of the differences there have been efforts actually and still uh, still they are doing efforts on groups the representatives of the NFPA 45 and representatives of the National Building Code to conciliate to to standards and see to avoid confusion which one is better which one is uh, is better or how in other words is how uh, eliminate confusion from 
from uh, companies that they build this type of labor, uh, any la industrial laboratory or any laboratory in the university. Like I said, if they go with the IDC, so they ignore completely the NFTA 45. So there is always that type of com conflict. So we want we we follow. Uh, but that's the actual is going to be dictated by um, by the municipality by your uh, uh, where are you lo located. If you are if, if you are located in a city that says you're gonna you're gonna follow the IBC, you need to follow IBC. But don't ignore NFTA 45, especially in those uh, um, uh, extra precautions uh, that they are required to 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 have it. Like we mentioned, um, 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 ventilation systems. So you need to have the ventilation program in place. What type of ventilation do you have? Flows, etc. So that is very specific in NFTA 45. So I actually found this article, I may have summarized, um, uh, it's on the, uh, the, 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 the edition of July uh, 2017 on the chemical engineering progress. Very, uh, it's a very good article. So, um, but apparently everything rounds on the quantities, that's the big difference. And it's the, actually, see, actually you see both codes, yeah, the, the quantities are, are the difference is it's, 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 it's big. So, um, so which one you want to follow depending on where you are, like I said, you are, you, where are you located and, um, and then you go from there, but never ignore 45 or if you need to follow 45, don't ignore the international building code that it has its own international fire code inside of the same code. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have an excellent day. See you tomorrow for the next video. Bye.